You know, I've been thinking, as we look at what's going on around the world, there's plenty of things happening that's causing chaos everywhere. If you look at what's behind me here, you see the carnage of the war in Ukraine right now. The question is, how is it affecting you? How is it affecting me? It is affecting all of us one way or the other, and it is having an effect on us collectively. Some people are wondering what they should be doing. Some people are asking the question, what does this really mean? Uh, and and, and, and what, is, what are my next steps? And so today, this is what we're gonna be talking about, the war effect and prophecy. And this is what we're gonna be focusing on. We wanna thank you for joining us as we dig into this most irrelevant subject. And the program begins right now. We want to welcome you to this segment, The War Effect and Prophecy. And we're so glad that you have joined us here. If you have been watching the promos and things that have been running on our new platform, TikTok, uh, we want to welcome you this evening to this evening's uh, segment. Um, if you are a normal watcher, uh, listener uh, that tunes in on a regular basis, we want to welcome you to this segment of Prophecy Update Brief, meaning it will not be as long as it used to be, but it will be short, shorter and more concise as we do a more lengthy uh, dig in and in-depth view on prophecy and last day events on our other program, In Times Like These. And we'll uh, put that up and information about that near the end of uh, this uh, broadcast today. And so uh, what we're talking about today as we were on TikTok and putting things out, what we're focusing on is what we call the rest of the story. Now the rest of the story could be drawn out and given in greater detail, but what we are going to to seek to do this evening is be a bit concise and hitting certain things as it relates to what is going on right now, not just prophecy in general, but what is happening right now, what it means, does it even have a specific meaning? What does it represent to us? What does it mean to us? What we should be doing about what we see? And the most important question, you'll hear me say this every segment, the most important question is, Am I prepared for what I see? And that goes for anyone who may be in church, who may be a regular viewer here. You may be your first time viewing. You may not even be in church, but that is still the most important question. Am I prepared for what I'm seeing take place in this world right now? So tonight I want to begin with one uh, slide that will be put up on the screen. I wanna read that as we just give a quick synopsis and uh, kind of a view and foundation as we launch into this evening. Because the central theme of the Bible, the theme about which every other in the whole book clusters is the redemption plan. And we'll speak on that in just a moment. The restoration in the human soul of the image of God. From the first intimation of hope and the sentence pronounced in Eden that has the last great pr glorious promise of the revelation. They shall see his face and his name shall be in their foreheads. The burden of every book and every passage of the Bible is the unfolding of this wondrous theme. Man's uplifting the power of God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. All right. So we so there was a mention of the redemption plan. Simply what that means, in case you're having a question, in case you don't know, is. God's people, all of us, God's children, his whole creation has been dealing with a problem in this world called sin. And he's seeking to redeem us from uh, this current state 
of chaos and sin and degradation and get us to a place where we are prepared to see him in peace. So when the Bible talks about the redemption plan, uh, when he talks about being redeemed, that is what we are talking about. And so as we speak about prophecy and events that are transpiring, we're always looking for what does this event do? How does it fit into prophecy? Does it really fit? Oh, does it have, is this one very important or is it not as important? And so this evening we're going to spend a little time in God's word. We cannot get past that. And, and then talk about uh, uh, what is exactly happening. What's in front of everybody's face? What are we talking about? What are we thinking about uh, as it relates to what we are seeing? God's word says in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 19, that prophecy is a light. It is a light that shines in a dark place. And so if we when we look at future events or we see things happening and we cannot understand what it means, prophecy is something that was foretold it was going to happen. So we go in God's word and see, does the Bible talk about this? And if it does, then we seek to look in God's word further to understand what it means or what uh, what meaning does it have for us? And I don't mean to mean that, 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 that the Bible could have 10 different meanings. There is a meaning in God's word. So more of what I'm saying is, do we understand what it means to us? Maybe that's the better way to say that. And so when we prophecy shines a light in a dark place. So when we look out and don't understand what we see, that is the purpose of prophecy. Uh, and, 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 and for, in John 14, 29, God's word makes reference to that the Lord will always uh, give a prophecy so that when it happens, it would do something for us. We would all believe. And so some people have uh, a doubt in God. You know, uh, uh, what does this mean? Do, can I really trust this person? Is there really a God in heaven? And so there is a book that has been written called the Bible that contains prophecies about even the last days. And so when these prophecies are read and dug into and then we we begin to understand what they mean and then we see things that relate to that prophecy. All it does is causes us to believe more in Jesus Christ, because we know that he, he, he had this written a long time ago and now it is happening. So it just increases our belief in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Christ. And so now this evening is called the, the war effect, the war effect. And we're talking about that because we we have the war in Ukraine going on right now. Russia has invaded Ukraine and we are watching the news like the news cycle all day. Every day is about the war in Ukraine. Even when they take a break from it, they're coming right back to it. If they give some other news, they're coming right back to it because this is uh, the big news of today. Why is Russia in Ukraine? What does that mean for us? And we have other events taking place. The earthquake in Japan took place just the other day. And, and then there's the pandemic that is taking place and has been ongoing for some years now. And, and we have other events taking place and we won't try to dig into all of them this evening. We're just going to spend a few minutes dealing with a few that is taking place right now. And that is the purpose of this program is to deal with what is happening right at the very moment. And even then we wouldn't be able to get to every single event. So we would extract a few events and spend some time talking about them uh, and, 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 and digging into them a little bit on this program and all, always wanting to point you to uh, our other program in times like these that airs uh, Saturday afternoon at 5 p.m. where we take a much deeper dive into prophecy in the Bible and what it means and what we should be doing, how we should be living our lives and all of those great and wonderful topics. But for today, we want to focus on Matthew chapter 24, Matthew chapter 24, uh, verses six through eight. And, and it says that, and, you know, that there will be wars and rumors of wars and that there will be nations rising against nations and kingdoms against kingdoms. And I believe we have an understanding of what that is. You know, today there will be governments rising against governments, countries rising against countries, and there would be confusion everywhere. The Bible goes on to say that there would be famines and 
pestilences and, and earthquakes in diverse places, meaning that stuff would be happening everywhere. But then verse 8 says, these are the beginning of sorrows. And so now people want, would want to know, you know, if that is the beginning of sorrows, how do I know when I've reached the end of the story? If that's the beginning of sorrows or the beginning of the story, then how would I know that I am at the end of the story or the end of sorrows or the end of the problems that we're seeing? And the Bible is very clear on that. And we're going to touch on that this evening. And so uh, as we launched our TikTok the other, uh, the other day, this we quoted this scripture. Uh, there will be wars and rumors of wars. And we see a war going on right now between Russia and Ukraine. And we have other countries standing on the periphery of this war who are uh, having things to say uh, um, about the war. So, you know, uh, the, the Western countries, the United States and all of its allies and NATO are saying certain things and trying to keep uh, Russia and China and India and, and North Korea at bay to say, you know, listen, don't you get in it. There will be consequences. There have even been financial consequences that have been uh, put on Russia. They have been sanctioned. I believe Russia has been sanctioned more than any country I've ever heard of. Uh, their economy is, is going to be in real, real trouble or really is already in trouble. And then you have the other countries on the other side who are saying, listen, they are an ally of ours, but they're trying to take the political stances to not do anything that would cause greater consequences. One thing that we're seeing is that it is causing all of the world to unite one way or the other. Remember that. We'll always mention that. Something that is happening that is always causing the different countries to unite. So there are many countries on the Western side that are uniting, trying to put their, their might and their will behind sanctioning Russia and all of these things. And we're watching this transpire on TV every single day. And we're hoping, most of us, I believe, are hoping down in our hearts that this will go away or end very soon. And it may. This particular war may or it may not. And so there are a lot of people who are suffering because of what's happening in Ukraine. You're seeing houses and buildings bombed and people are dying and 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 and, and the government is in trouble. And, 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 and how are people going to get away? And people are trying to escape. And and it's at the peril of their lives. Uh, their people are sending their families away and the men are coming back to fight. Uh, listen, this is having an effect on them. And it is also having an effect on us. And so this is Matthew chapter 24, verse 6 through 8, saying that all of these things would happen. And this is just the beginning of sorrows. And so uh, some of us may be aware of what I'm speaking of. Others may not. And so we're we're speaking of it in a way to make sure that everyone can understand what is being discussed or said or taught this uh, on this segment today. And so as we talk about that, you know, uh, we, that we cannot overlook um, what it means to us. Right now, the war in Ukraine right now is, is what's the best word I want to say, is, is affecting all of us in a different way. The whole world is being affected. How do we know? This war began in, in, in Ukraine. Russia invaded them. And now we have a problem. We have high gas prices. The pandemic came along and now we have food shortages going on in America and around the world right now. And that's a whole nother subject. How do you have a pandemic that is happening that is affecting the whole world at the same time? And we're all experiencing the same problems at the same time. I don't care if you're here. You can go in the grocery store and not find food. You can go in another city uh, or state in, in the U.S. and see the same thing. But you can also go across the waters and go international and go to another country. And they're having the same problems that we're having. Something's up with that. And so as we look into God's word, God's word begins to make sense as we begin to link a different texts together and look into God's word for an understanding of what we're seeing. Even with these few events, we have the pandemic we're mentioning today. We have the war in Russia. We have a 7.3 earthquake that took place in Japan just the other day. That is a sizable earthquake. All three events did the same thing. And you say, now, what is that? 
That one thing it did is cause fear. Because when you look at these events, you're wanting to know what does that mean? Why is this even happening? When you think about uh, the, the war in Ukraine, you want to ask the reason, why is Russia jumping on its neighboring country? For what are they trying to gain? Yes, there are resources there. And yes, they're probably after those resources and after control and after dominance. But I want to caution us. Whenever we look at events taking place, we can look at the why, the reasoning behind what is happening and try to figure out, you know, the mechanics around what made it happen and all of that. And, and that has its place. But this evening, I want to challenge us to think about this most important question more than why is it happening to understand more and to talk about the reason why it is happening and what I should be doing about it. What does it mean to my life? And I'm talking about my everyday life, but I'm more talking about eternal life. And so that is the real question. So I want to, to, to kind of break the thinking this evening uh, from why it's happening, the mechanics around uh, why is Russia in Ukraine. Yes, we can look at earthly things. They, I'm sure they're after the resources. It is a very resource rich company. And there, there are other questions that we're waiting to have answered from a Bible and prophecy standpoint. Who's really behind this war? What does that really mean? But some of that is not clear yet. And we don't want to jump out and digging into all of that in this particular segment. But we are going to talk about that in future segments, as well as on the other program that we mentioned earlier. But I want to challenge us this evening, all of us, is to see what's happening on the news and understand that these things are what the Bible calls signs of the times. And what that means is, you know, when we're driving over the highway and we see, let's just say we're going to New York City. And from where I am, that's going to be a long drive up the East Coast. But as I get closer, I see signs that say New York in so many miles, Manhattan in so many miles, uh, different boroughs in so many miles. But every time I see that sign, I know that I'm getting closer to my destination. And so when we see these signs, wars and rumors of wars and earthquakes and famines and pestilences, it lets us know that we are getting closer to the end of sorrows. Because as we look at Matthew, it talks about this being the beginning of sorrows. And so as we know that those are the beginnings, there has to be an end in sight if there is a beginning of issues, there must be something that tells us that this is the end. And so this evening, that's what we want to spend a few minutes talking about. So more of a general overview and not getting so much into the details. But now, as we said in the promo, you know, I'm sure you want to know what the rest of the story is. And that's what we're going to be talking about, the, the rest of the story. And so we're going to take a few minutes and delve into God's word and look at some verses and explain just what a few of these events, uh, how they uh, how how they fit in the scenario and what they mean to us as people, as God's people, children, what we should be doing about what we see. And so uh, we're going to put up on the screen a few scriptures and we're going to go to Luke chapter 21. And some of you may be already saying, oh, Brother Mason, I, I see where you're going. I, I've studied that. I've read that. And we praise the Lord for that. But let's go to Luke chapter 21. And we're going to start at verse 20. And go to verse 22. We're going to go to Luke chapter 21 and look at verse 20 to 22. And then we'll go forward in, in some more verses. Uh, God's word says um, in Luke chapter 21, verse 20, uh, it's going to come up here in just a moment on the screen. But God's word is clear in making sure we understand that there is a beginning of sorrows. And at least in principle, there is a end of sorrows. There is an end of this whole story. And so uh, the Bible is going to lead us and guide us as we go through that. And you, okay, we see it on the screen. He said, chapter, I mean, verse 20 of chapter 21 says, And when ye shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. This, and the reason I wanted to start is because here, 
The Bible is giving us a story about the destruction of Jerusalem. This is now history. We can go back and look in just straight up history and see was the city of Jerusalem ever destroyed completely and all of the information will come up. So the Bible had prophesied, Jesus had prophesied that Jerusalem would be destroyed. History now tells us that indeed that was a true prophecy because it was utterly destroyed. And so verse 21 says, then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains and let them which are in the midst of it depart out and let not them that are in the countries enter therein too. Verse 22 says, for these be the days of vengeance that all things which are written may be fulfilled. And so God's word makes it clear that when Jerusalem is compassed about, that is the time to leave. Now, I want, I want us to get something here, because as we as whenever we look into God's word, we must have something in our mind. So we have to try to seek to understand how to connect scripture with scripture to get an understanding of God's word. And that's what we seek to do here. All right. So now there's a prophecy in the Bible that talks about Jerusalem being destroyed. Now, the, the, the Luke is telling us, listen, when as far as that prophecy is concerned, when you see the cities come past about, you may not know the day and the hour that that this thing is going to happen. But when you wake up in the morning and you see your city come past about circled about by an army, know then that that is your sign to leave. That is the sign to leave the city so that you can be protected. And so there were many who, when they saw this, when you look at history, they got out of that city and they were preserved. There were others who did not pay attention to that sign and they lost their lives in that battle when Jerusalem was completely decimated and destroyed. And so why do I why do I start there? Why do I mention that? Because as we see these signs, it behooves us not to ignore what we see, but to pay attention to it and then seek an answer for it if we don't understand. But then once we have an understanding, then we need to act accordingly with our lives. So I hope you're listening closely to that. When we see these signs, they are telling us something. And so as we see that, then we know what we should be doing. Those who got out of Jerusalem when the city was compassed about the first time remained safe and alive. Those who paid no attention lost their lives in that great battle that took place in Jerusalem. So let's go. Let's let's drop down to verse twenty five. We just we're just going through God's word. We have a few more verses to go through and explain and, and to deal with what's going on. And then I believe it'll be a little more clear. Verse 25 says, and there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roar. Right, so let's let's just break down this verse right quick. Uh, before we move on, and there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars. So now if we study God's word at all, then we would we will know that if we go to Revelation and look at chapter seven, I believe it is, we will see other verses that talk about this event. There were signs in the sun that this actually happened. The sun went dark and it refused to shine. The moon turned to blood and the stars fell out of the sky at different times in 1755 and 1780. And, and the other date escapes me. Uh, but these things actually happen. You can go in history and look them up and know that this prophecy has already taken place. But then there's uh, this other stuff added here in the text. It says, and upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity. Now, now we already know what the word distress means. So if the Bible says distress of nations, you know what happens in your life when you have distress. It's, it's problematic. You, you're on edge. You're trying to figure out what to do. You have confusion in your mind. You have different things happening that you need a clear answer for. Sometimes we're looking for clarity. And so many of us begin to pray and ask for clarity about a situation when we don't know what to do. So as the Bible says, there were upon the earth, there will be distress of nations. We're talking about problems happening 
in all of the nations around the world where they're trying to figure out what to do about certain problems. Now, is that happening right now? Oh, yes, it is. So not we have more than just wars and rumors of wars. We have moved on a little bit to where we are having uh, distress of nations. And, and that distress of nations is coming after the events of things happening in the sun, the moon and the stars, which have already happened. So now we're moving into as the rest of the verse is saying on earth, there will be distress of nations. Now, right now, the nations everywhere are having a distressful time trying to figure out what to do. What is the answer to the world's problems? What is the answer to the pandemic? What is the real answer to the pandemic? What is the real answer to this war? And, 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 and why is the world stirred with the spirit of war? Why is everybody wanting to fight? Where, why is everybody trying to flex its muscle? And who is going to end up winning the battle of the flexing of the muscle? Who is going to, to come out on top? Who's really going to lead all of this? These are the questions that when we read the Bible come to our mind. So this is going to be uh, on earth, the stress of nations with perplexity. Now, I don't have time to break down this word perplexity in the biblical uh, uh, stand from a biblical standpoint. But when it talks about the earth uh, on earth, having distress of nations with perplexity, the description here is talking about a financial problem. So real quickly. Distress of nations with financial issues. Is that happening right now? Absolutely it is. And so um, 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 we are having distress of nations with a financial problem. And then it talks about what, as the sea and the waves roaring. You can imagine what a sea and, a, and the waves are when it's lashing in fury with a great storm. That is what's happening right now. It means it would be very violent, turbulent, continuing to happen. That is what's happening right now. The world is fearful. It goes on to say, as we, we're running a little low on time, so we're going to pick up the pace a little bit here. As the Bible goes on to say in the next verse that men's hearts are failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. So my question to you is, are men's hearts failing them for fear? Absolutely. Are people scared about what's happening? Be why? Because there is no answer. There is distress of nations with no answer. There's a financial problem. There's not an answer. Right now, Russia is in a war with Ukraine. But over here in the United States and other places, there's a problem with gas prices. You go to the pump and the prices are high. And you're like, what is going on? Why is this happening? Now, we may not can delineate all of the reasons why, but the Bible tells us that in the end of all things, there would be a financial problem. That means that there will be people who would have a problem making a living. They, that our money would not be worth what it's used to. And we can all look at history and see that this is happening. Our money is not worth the same as it used to be. We go to the pump and what it takes to fill up our car now, didn't, we didn't used to have to spend that money before. And now gas prices are up and we're hoping that they come down. We're going in the store because of a pandemic, we're going in the store and the shelves are bare. Now, you may not know exactly why the, the, the chain, the distribution chain is interrupted. But you do know that when you go in, you're seeing this and you're like, wait a minute. This is causing a problem. This pandemic has caused a problem with our resources. We're not able to go to the store and buy food like we used to. And so now many more people are trying to do what? Grow their own food because they're looking around and understanding that there is a problem. So even if I cannot tell you exactly why the store shelves are bare, when I look in God's word, I know that there's going to be a problem with money. There's going to be a problem with the economy. There's going to be a problem with resources being available and our money is not going to do what it used to do. And so I look around and I can see, oh, there's a sign right there. Hmm. There's a sign right there. Hmm. And the Bible makes clear to us as we drop down in the rest of these verses, it talks about a fig tree. Uh, we go down to verse uh, 30. We we'll go down to verse 30. It talks about a fig tree and this and this parable right below what is being talked about here. It talks about when you see the fig leaves come on the tree, you know that summer is nigh. 
And so just the way that you know that, when you see these signs taking place, it says, when they now shoot forth, ye see and know of your own self that summer is now nigh at hand. Verse 31. It says, so likewise, ye, when ye see these things come to pass, know ye that the kingdom of God is nigh at hand. And verse 32 says, verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass away till all be fulfilled. What is that telling us? Well, right now we are seeing this distress of nations. We are seeing a, 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 a distress of nations with perplexity. We're seeing it as, as if the waves and the sea is, 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 is raging. It's everywhere and we have total chaos. And so we know that these events we see right now with the war in, uh, with, your, with Russia and Ukraine are stoking fears. And it is, it is causing a, a problem with the resources of the world. It's causing prices to go up. Their economy is going to tank and it is affecting all of us everywhere. It's a sign. Now, some people might want to know, but why? But what, those questions will be answered in time. But as we look in God's word, we see prophecy being fulfilled. This is just another event that is happening on a continuum that suggests that Jesus is getting ready to come back. That the end of this world, as the Bible talks about, is right upon us. And then it says that this generation shall not pass. And so the generation that is seeing those things We'll also see the rest of the things, Jesus coming and so on and so forth. And so as we talk about the pandemic that has been going on for years, its effect on our economy, our health and other issues, we know that that is a sign of the end of time. When we look at this war in Ru that with Russia and Ukraine, we can look at it and know that it is a sign of things in the end. Yeah, are, are there nuances and details we could get into? Sure. But when we see those things, we recognize it is a sign. When we look at the earthquake in Japan and other earthquakes and tsunamis and things that keep happening day in and day out, those are signs that tell us that we're at the very end. So the question is, what should I be doing? The Bible tells us in, 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 in 2 Peter chapter 3, Verse 11, it says, what manner of persons ought I to be? And, I, and I'm just going to paraphrase it and leave it there. What manner of persons ought I to be? See, well, it says, seeing that these things shall all happen and the earth shall melt with fervent heat. So in other words, if I'm seeing these signs and I'm trying to get an understanding of what they mean, and I want to dig into them, and at the very least, I understand them to be signs of the end. Then I go to God's word and it tells me now, what kind of person ought you to be if you know that the end is here because you're seeing these signs? Then it tells us that we need to be people who are seeking to be like Christ. Now, if you, if, if you, if you are a person who is, who is seeking God already and you want to live for Christ and you want to be obedient, I am encouraging you to continue that because we're going to be talking about that in later segments. But if, this, if you're someone who is seeing and hearing some of this for the first time, and you're like, what does that mean? We are going to continue to talk about this, but I want to encourage you to reach out to the ministry and, 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 and as we put details on the end of this program, if you have questions about what does that mean to bring my life in accordance with God? What does that mean when you say, Brother Marcus, to get ready for what is coming, to be prepared? And we can talk about that a little more and, and, and respond to one another a little more about that. But the Bible tells us what manner of persons ought ye to be, seeing that these things are happening and they are telling you that the end is here and that Jesus is getting ready to come. The war effect, what does it mean for us? It is a sign of the times and it will continue happening and to, to, drag, to, to cause more fear, to cause more problems economically, to cause more uh, chaos and, 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 and fear in the hearts of men because they're looking after those things that are coming on the earth. I hope and pray that this, this 30 minutes or so that we have spent together has just been a good first step as we talk about uh, in a prophecy update brief uh, the things that are happening and what it means in prophecy. We're going to be doing this segment week after week as things are happening so that we can remain awake and keep our eyes on the prize 
because soon Jesus will return. And we want all of us to be ready.